everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in Unit 3, Differentiation, Composite, Implicit, and Inverse Functions. Today's topic is the last topic of Chapter 3, 3.6, Calculating Higher Order Derivatives. Enjoy today's notes. All right, welcome to 3.6, Calculating Higher Order Derivatives. So uh, for today, our focus is on the idea that you can take derivatives of a derivative function. So for example, um, if I had f of x and I wanted to take its derivative, obviously we know we would call that f prime of x, but we can actually take the derivative of the derivative, uh, and frequently we would refer to that as f double prime of x, and if we wanted to continue taking derivatives, we could do f triple prime of x. And so we have a table here with some different notations of derivatives. Uh, in this case, if we have the original function y, its derivative we, we might refer to as y prime, its second derivative y double prime, then y triple prime, and then at a certain point, you know, adding all these little tick marks just feels like a little bit too much. And so what we end up doing in those cases is we end up putting it uh, as an exponent in parentheses. So y to the nth, or not y to the nth, but this would be the nth derivative of our y function. Similarly for f of x, you know, we would say f prime of x, f double prime of x, f triple prime of x, and if I, you know, want to take the fourth derivative or further, frequently again we'll just put uh, the number of the derivative up sort of as an exponent in parentheses. So this would be f, uh, the nth derivative of f of x. Um, similarly, we could use our other notations as well. This would be y, uh, y, our original function. dy dx would be the derivative. The second derivative would be d squared y over dx squared. Interesting to notice here that the only thing that gets uh, the exponents is the d in the numerator and the x in the denominator. Similarly, for our third derivative, we see that as well. That would stand for the third derivative. And if we have the nth derivative in this case, we would say d to the n uh, or the nth derivative uh, with respect to the x to the n for this. So that would be our nth derivative written in a couple of different ways. Now again, chapter 2 and chapter 3 are really focused on derivative rules. Uh, there are actually a lot of reasons on why we would want to take, say, a second derivative or a third derivative, um, and we're going to learn uh, more about those in chapters 4 and 5. But for right now, we just want to know that, you know, you can take the derivative of a derivative, and there's actually some use to it. Um, so let's talk about how we might do that. Uh, if this is our uh, original function, x to the 6th minus 2x to the 4th plus 5x squared minus 3x plus 9, you know, we would use our power rule uh, to find the derivative and say that that is 6x to the 5th minus 8x to the 3rd plus 10x minus 3. And if we want to take the, the find the second derivative of this function, that's going to be the derivative of the first derivative. So that would simply be 30x to the 4th minus 24x squared plus 10. We could keep going. If I wanted to find the third derivative, that well, that's going to be the derivative of the second derivative. So that is going to be 120x to the third minus 48x. And then that 10 is going to go away since that's a constant. And then if we wanted to find the fourth derivative here, that's going to be the derivative of the third derivative. So that would be what? 360x squared minus 48. Now obviously we could keep going as many derivatives as we need to, and for a polynomial function, interestingly enough, if I get to a certain point, no matter what I start with for my polynomial function, if I take enough derivatives, I'm going to end up with zero, because all of those terms are going to end up becoming constants, and then the derivative of the constant is going to end up being zero. So if I were to take it enough times, I'm going to always uh, you know, end up with zero as some nth derivative uh, for these polynomial functions for this. And that's not the case for other types of functions, but you know, if we have just a standard polynomial function, uh, that is in fact going to be the case. Um, let's take a look at this for our second example. So we want to find the first derivative and the second derivative if this is our y function. We know that it's easier if we rewrite this uh, so we can use the power rule. So this is x to the 1 half plus x to the negative 2. So the derivative, using that power rule, is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half plus negative 2 times x to the negative 3 power. 
Um, we obviously know that we could rewrite these so they don't have negative exponents, but seeing that I'm about to take the derivative again, I'm going to just leave it like this uh, and, then, and then take that derivative. So 1 half times negative 1 half would be negative 1 fourth, and if I subtract 1 from that negative 1 half, that's going to be negative 3 over 2, using our power rule here. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, and that's going to be x to the negative 4th. So if I wanted to rewrite this uh, second derivative so it had no negative exponents, that's going to be negative 1 over 4 times the square root of x cubed plus 6 over x to the 4th. That would be our der second derivative for that original function uh, that we had uh, to start off with here. All right, well, what about the second derivative with implicit differentiation? Well, we remember, again, implicit differentiation. We've got functions that have x's and y's, and we cannot define it explicitly. If our equation here is sine of y is equal to x plus y, and we want to find the second derivative, so this is, uh, again, representing our second derivative, we obviously need to find the first derivative first. So if we take the derivative of both sides, that is going to be cosine of y, times the dy dx, right, because we're taking the derivative of both sides with respect to x here, um, and that's going to be equal to 1 plus the derivative of y, which would be dy dx. Here in this case, it's going to be most useful for us if we can, uh, you know, get that dy dx by itself before we take the derivative. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to subtract uh, this dy dx term to the other side, so cosine of y dy dx minus dy dx is equal to 1. Then I'm going to factor uh, the dy dx out. So dy dx times cosine of y minus 1 is equal to 1, which means that dy dx is equal to 1 over cosine of y minus 1. All right, so this is sort of a pausing spot. I'm going to just, I'm going to box it even though it's not the answer. We're going to need this later. Um, but this is our first derivative, right? First derivative. And they're asking here for the second derivative. So the good news here is if we take the derivative of, uh, of this function, that we're going to end up with our second derivative. Now, the bad news and not necessarily bad news, but what we're going to have to work through here is that, uh, you know, this appears to be a function being divided by another function. And so in this case, you know, we could use the quotient rule here or, you know, I'll, I'll say an alternative way. You might consider trying to rewrite this as uh, cosine y minus one to the negative one power. In that case, you could use the chain rule if you do it this way. Uh, but I'm going to use the quotient rule just as written. So... I'm going to use the quotient rule for my example. But you could, of course, use the chain rule if you wanted to, to do this, and it'll get you an equivalent answer uh, in the end. So what is this going to be? Well, if we take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, we're going to end up with that d squared y over dx squared on the, uh, on the left side. And then by our quotient rule, again, that's going to be low d high. So cosine y minus 1 times the derivative of 1, which is 0 minus high d low, so 1 times the derivative of cosine y, which is going to be negative sine of y dy dx. And then that's going to be divided by the denominator squared, so low squared, cosine y minus 1 quantity squared. And so we want to evaluate, obviously here, you know, whatever this is times 0 is going to, going to end up going away, that's going to be uh, just 0. And then here we've got a uh, negative times a negative, so those are going to cancel out and become a positive. So it looks like that this d squared y over dx squared is going to be equal to uh, sine of y times dy dx, all divided by uh, cosine of y minus 1, quantity squared. Now, here's the thing, and this is the thing that sort of trips people up when we're doing these types of problems. We notice, interestingly enough, that the second derivative function is, you know, sine of y times the first derivative of the function divided by cosine y minus 1 squared. So to find the second derivative, we need to know what the first derivative is. But luckily for us, we actually found that over here. We know an expression for it, and so we're going to put that in for our dy dx. We're going to substitute that in, this whole expression for dy dx over here. 
Um, and so what does that look like? Well, we're gonna have d squared y over dx squared. That's gonna be equal to sine of y. And that's being multiplied by that one over cosine y minus one. And then, you know, instead of having this denominator here, I'm gonna rewrite that as a multiplication uh, by like as a fraction. So that's gonna be times one over cosine y minus one squared. Now we notice that these cosine y minus one times cosine y minus one squared, that should give us cosine y minus one to the third. And so for my final answer for this, I've got d squared, uh, the second derivative of y with respect to x is gonna be equal to sine of y divided by cosine y minus one quantity cubed because we had uh, this being raised to the one and then that was being uh, multiplied by something being raised squared. They have the same base. And so that is going to be our final answer for the derivative function or the second derivative function for this implicitly defined equation. Um, that is actually it for today. And this is our last new lesson for chapter three. The rest of this is just practice, trying to find higher order derivatives. Uh, could be second derivative, could be third derivative, pay attention to what it's asking you for. Uh, but we've got some good practice, check those answers. And as always, come to class with any questions that you've got. Um, our next lesson is gonna be the chapter three review. Uh, good luck on today's mastery check and have a great rest of your day.